Hey you guys, what's up? In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a like filming setup and kind of like a beauty room tour. It's more gonna be about my filming setup because I recently did switch up my filming setup and I really like the way that it looks now, so I wanted to show you guys my new setup. I haven't done a filming setup video in a few years now and I know that you guys really liked my last filming setup video I did and now I feel like my quality is a lot better than it was then, so yeah, that's why I wanted to film today's video, so I hope you guys are all excited about it. If you are, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Also make sure you guys have your notifications turned on that way you don't miss out on any of my future videos. All you have to do is click the bell next to the subscribe button and then you'll receive a notification every time I upload a new video. And yeah let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about with my filming setup is the lighting because lighting is like the most important thing when it comes to filming videos on YouTube especially like makeup and beauty videos. A lot of people think that the camera and the lens and all of that is like the most important thing but honestly, lighting is everything. Lighting can completely change the way a video looks. Maybe you have like an old camera and you don't like the way that your videos are looking. Try switching up the lighting before buying a new camera. All right, so let's go ahead and go over all of the lights that I am using right now. So my main light in front of me is a ring light and this is from the brand Newer. This is their 18 inch ring light. I'm pretty sure almost all of my lights are from that brand and you can buy all of their lights on Amazon. I will have everything linked in my description box below for you guys. So I have been using this ring light for years. I've never had any problems with it at all. I keep it pretty much on like the lowest setting because I don't want the lights to be too bright. My lighting might change a little bit over the next few weeks because I did get some new lights and I'm still learning how to use them. So the lighting's not perfect right now, but the ring light is like my center light that really lights up my face. I do have like a diffuser on it because I don't want the light to be too harsh. A ring light is a really good strutter light. I feel like a lot of people could get away with just having a ring light if you're just beginning to do like makeup videos and things like that or if you film like TikTok videos having a ring light is a must have. Then I recently did switch up like my two lights that are on the side that kind of light up like the sides of my face and a little bit on the background. I used to have two soft boxes on either side of my ring light but I was kind of like over the way that it looked and I wanted something new so I picked up the newer two pack bi-color LED video lights. These do have barn doors on them and these are a lot smaller of lights than soft boxes. I feel like my filming area right here is just so much more open with these smaller lights and the stands are smaller and I feel like I had more room to really make the setup how I wanted it. So yeah, I am just now learning how to use these two lights. They do have like dimmers on the back. You can adjust the brightness from pretty low to like super bright. Right now I have these kind of like, I would say three quarters of the way up. So I might adjust them and make them a little bit lower. I almost feel like I need like a diffuser or something because they are super bright bright. And what I love about these lights is that you can adjust the color temperature. So you can go from like a really cool light to a more warm and yellow light. Right now I have mine on the coolest lighting setting because I feel like a lot of the times my videos lean kind of yellow and I don't really want the yellow light on me because I feel like my videos are yellow enough. So I do like to put these on the cool light setting. So yeah, I am a newbie when it comes to these two lights, so I am still learning how to kind of set them. But overall, I feel like they just make the video look so much crisper. I like the way that the lights actually look in my eyes. I noticed that whenever I started using these lights, I feel like the soft boxes create like a huge reflection in your eyes and you can't even really see your eye color. Now with these two lights, I feel like you can really see the eye, which I think is good for makeup videos. Then I do have a big soft box above me. This is a hair light. This was probably like one of the game changer lights that I bought for my filming setup and I got this a few years ago. It was in my last filming setup video. This is amazing. It really changed the way my videos look. As you can see, the top of my head is like lit up and I do have this big silver reflector on my table in front of me. So the light from above does reflect up and it kind of lights here like on my chest and my chin and right under my face right here. There is a little bit of a shadow, but I like the way that it reflects off of this. And then I do have two big reflectors on either side of me that the lights kind of bounce off of. I did get these at Lowe's, I believe. I'll show you guys the back of the reflector so you can see the brand, but I'm pretty sure these are some kind of like insulation type product. You can get them at Home Depot as well. And I think that I had them cut them in half or we cut them in half in the parking lot. I think it was like one big board and I did cut it in half and put it on two sides and then I have these set up on. These are just like lighting stands and they are clamped on to the stands. So since I recently did like get rid of my two softbox lights, I didn't want to like 
just put them away in the closet. So I did use them to light up my background and I feel like the background looks so much better. I was using like spotlights and I feel like the background still looked pretty dim. There are some shadows still, but I like the way that it looks a lot more now. So I do have these two soft boxes behind me lighting up my background. And then I have this little newer LED light right in the center to really brighten up the center of the backdrop. We're gonna get more into like my background later on in the video because I do use like this background, which is always set up. And then I also use paper backgrounds as well or fabric. So we'll get into that a little bit later. So now we're gonna go ahead and talk about my camera now that I've shown you guys all of the lights. So I recently did upgrade my camera. Oh my gosh, and it has been so amazing. So before I bought this new camera, I was using this camera right here and this is a little DSLR. This is the Canon Rebel SL1. It's like connected to all of these cables. So that's why I'm not trying to like hold it up too much, but this is a great starter camera. I believe the new version of this is called the Canon SL2. Now this was a good camera, but my problem with it was that the autofocus was like terrible. I could not film my videos on autofocus without it going like in and out of focus constantly. So I always had to shoot on manual focus and that it was like a nightmare because I always had to have my husband come in and focus me and if I wanted to do like close-ups and stuff I couldn't really do that without like readjusting my camera so I did upgrade my camera to the Canon 90D this is like their newer version of the 80D I really really liked this camera a lot I did rent it before I bought it because I was not about to spend that much money without knowing that I really love the camera and I would highly recommend that to you guys if you want to make sure you really love something before you buy it, you could rent it. There are like lens rental places, camera rental places. I think the place that I used was called Borrow Lenses. So I did rent the camera a couple of times actually to make sure that I really liked it. And then I did go ahead and buy it. It was sold out for so many months. I feel like it took forever to be able to actually get the camera. I guess it is a pretty popular camera. The autofocus on this camera is amazing. It has like eye tracking focus here. I will show you guys. So as you guys can see, it is like tracking both my face and my eye. Eye. There's a little square around my eye and then around my face and the autofocus is so good Having a camera with a really good autofocus is so important Especially when you're doing tutorials and stuff because I know a lot of people struggle with when they're holding something up or like close to their face and the camera will focus on what's in front of them like if they're holding something right here instead of on their face but with this camera since it has the eye tracking it really focuses just on the face even though I'm holding something else up close to my face I hope that makes sense but yeah I really have been enjoying this camera a lot I still do use my Canon Rebel SL1 when I'm doing like eye close-ups and stuff because I like the really precise focusing that you can do with that camera even though the autofocus is not the best for video but for eye close-ups I still do use that camera camera sometimes. Mostly I just use the 90D for filming my videos because it is a really good camera for video. So I don't necessarily think that you need a really expensive camera because I still think that the Canon Rebel DSLRs are really good cameras. I think the lens is more important than the actual camera, but I wanted this specific DSLR because of like the autofocus and it does have 4K. I pretty much shoot all of my videos in 4K now. I might change that up. I'm not sure if it's really necessary to film like that but that's why I wanted this specific camera. Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the lens because I feel like that is more important than the camera itself. So the lens that I use is the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. This is the same lens that I was using when I did my last filming setup video. This lens is amazing and it's only like a hundred bucks. I'm pretty sure you can get it at Best Buy for like 125, but you can find it for as low as a hundred dollars and it is amazing. It's like the cheapest but best lens that you guys can get. And the autofocus with the lens in this camera is really good. I never have any issues with this lens focusing whenever I'm using my Canon 90D. This lens does give you a really nice blurry background because it goes all the way down to 1.8. I do not film at 1.8 because it is a little bit too bright and kind of washed out. But for taking photos like outside and things like that of just like regular people or portraits, it is really nice to have that blurry background. But for filming videos, I don't actually shoot that low, but I love the way that this blurs the background. I absolutely hate like kit lenses or the lenses that come with the cameras. Like the, I think it's the 18 to 55 millimeter. I'm pretty sure I have that lens and I never ever use it. I don't like it at all because the f-stop is a really high one. I think it's like five or 5.6 or something crazy. So having a lens with a low f-stop is really important if you want a nice blurry background. And I feel like it just gives a really nice look to your video. A lens that I have been eyeing is the Sigma 35 millimeter. I think it's the 1.4 lens. 
and I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna actually upgrade because I feel like this cheap lens does a really nice job. So now let's go ahead and talk about audio. So I used to use this mic whenever I filmed my last setup video. I haven't used this and I want to say probably about a year or maybe a year and a half. This is the Techstar SGC598. Now this is a really good starter microphone. This is actually a really good mic. Like it has really nice sound quality. I believe this is only like a $25 mic and you do plug it in. I used to have it on like a boom stand and it was right above me. So I was pretty close to the mic. But I just didn't really like how this one picked up a lot of background noise and I felt like my audio always just sounded a little bit far away. But that's just like my personal preference. I still feel like this is a really good microphone. So if you're just starting out, I would definitely recommend this one. I'll have it linked in my description box below. But the mic that I did upgrade to is, I'll try and show you because it's on my shirt right now. It's like a little clip mic and I just clipped this on to my shirt. And I really like how this audio sounds. It's plugged in directly to to my camera so I don't have to do any kind of like syncing or editing. That's just a little bit too complicated for me. So I like when my mics are connected directly into my camera and the camera just does the audio from the mic. I did have to adjust my settings a little bit on my camera and do like manual sound. You wanna like put your mic on and then kind of talk and make sure that the camera doesn't have the audio too high. You do have to adjust that whenever you use like a mic plugged into your camera. But I really like the way that this mic sounds. I believe it was like a $50 microphone and I can't remember what brand it's from but I will have it linked in my description box below as well. But I feel like it really did improve the quality quality of my audio and yeah it is kind of annoying to have a mic on your shirt but it's really not that big of a deal for me just sitting here filming like makeup videos but sometimes I do accidentally like hit my mic or my hair goes on it and it does like <laughs> leave little sounds in my videos but yeah I do really like this mic so now let's talk a little bit about my camera settings kind of how I film my videos so I do film all my videos with my camera connected to my MacBook this is a MacBook Pro I believe I bought this in 2015 and I do have the Canon EOS utility software. You can download this directly from their website and it is free. You just have to pick which camera you have. I have like the regular EOS utility and then the EOS utility three, which is for like newer cameras, like for the Canon 90D, but the original one does work for my SL1 camera when I use that. So I can adjust my settings directly from my computer right here. So my settings right now, I do kind of change these depending on the lighting and I did recently change them because of my new setup. So they're not like perfect right now, but right now I am filming with the f-stop at 3.2 I have my ISO at 100 and then my shutter speed is at 1 out of 60 and I believe you're supposed to do like double your frame rate for your shutter speed and my frame rate I believe is at 29 point something right now so that's why I'm filming at 60 and then I do have this is a new thing that I started doing is my picture style is set at standard and something that a lot of people don't talk about which I have really struggled with is white balance and I am filming with a custom white balance and I recently did just pick up this gray card which helps set your white balance so basically you just click on the little dropper on your computer and then click on the gray card and it sets the white balance and I feel like this has really helped. I feel like this creates a really natural looking white balance. Like I feel like the color is pretty true. And then as I said, I am filming right now in 4K. I'm filming at the highest quality that my camera does. I'm not sure if it actually looks better. Let me know what you guys think. I've recently switched to the highest quality. But I did watch a video where someone said to try and film at the highest quality that your camera does and your videos should look better. So I have been trying that out. So now we're going to talk about my different backgrounds. So this is like my kind of like homey background. I don't know what else to call it. And I like to use this for like non-tutorial type videos where I'm just sitting here and talking. So I did buy these little like fairy lights off of Amazon. They're just like the curtain lights. I will have them linked, of course. And then I have a curtain right above it so they kind of like don't show the wires of the lights and then these are attached with like little command hooks that I bought on Amazon as well and then all these decorations are just kind of from different places I believe most of them are probably from at home and then I did buy this little table off of Amazon as well it was like the perfect size for like my filming area like my background and this background is pretty far away from me because I want it to be pretty blurry I would say that this background is about three to 
four feet away from me and the farther away the better so you have like a nice definition between you and the background and then I also use paper backgrounds a lot like when I'm doing tutorials and stuff so I do have a backdrop stand right by this you can't see it right now like when I'm just sitting here but it does go up and over and then I can just pull down a paper backdrop. I do get all of my paper backdrops from like BH Photo and these are from the brand, I believe Savage. And I wanna say they're probably about $35 for the roll of paper and they're definitely worth it. These are a good investment. They're the best paper backdrops that I've ever used. And then I also use just fabric as background sometimes. I really like stretchy fabric because you can pull them really tight and put clips on them so they're not wrinkly. And then sometimes I'll even use like furry blankets and stuff like that and just hang them down off of my backdrop stand for a nice like textured background so yeah those are pretty much all of the backgrounds that I use I think I've pretty much gone over everything I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything that's important for you guys to know I know in my last video I talked about having a power adapter for my camera so that way I didn't have to charge any batteries but honestly with my new camera I've been just using the batteries that came with two batteries and the Canon 90D batteries last a pretty long time so I don't even really have to use a power adapter anymore my SL1 is still plugged into the power adapter which gives you like a constant source of power so if you're filming for a really long time that's really nice to have so maybe look up on Amazon if your camera can use a power adapter if so I would recommend using one of that so you don't have to worry about charging batteries or anything I just thought of something else that I forgot to mention earlier oh my gosh I just dropped it so I do use this little remote this is the Amazon basics remote and I believe you have to have like a Bluetooth or maybe Wi-Fi camera to use one like this because I could not use this with my SL1 I would have to have used like the kind of remote that has a cord that plugs into the camera but this one I can just point it at my camera and take like my thumbnail pictures and stuff like that so this has been like a lifesaver I use this all the time so I'm pretty sure I covered everything if you guys have any other questions just let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see a video like how I edit my YouTube videos or anything like that or how I edit my Instagram videos let me know because that would be like a whole separate video on how I do that so hopefully I covered everything and I hope that you guys all enjoyed today's video if you did please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already also make sure you guys have your notifications turned on that way you don't miss out on any of my future videos all you have to do is click the bell next to the subscribe button and then you'll receive a notification every time I upload a new video and I will see you guys in my next video thank you so much for watching